the nouns. My name is Dino Ablakovic. I'm a product manager for uh, microgrids under Markus Beer and Jürgen Häufer, a um, relatively new organization, Renewables within INC. And I'm to uh, talk to you today about microgrids and hybrid power plants and our solution called uh, Omnivice Hybrid Control and Fleet Management. Next slide, please. Um, so we find ourselves right now in um, a very fast phase of evolving energy market and technology. This revolution can be seen very clearly through a number of different moments uh, and value streams in the market. So we clearly see decentralization of energy supply through different um, decentralized generation assets. Uh, we see digitalization, uh, which uh, by using data enables uh, better efficiency and more transparency. And decarbonization is the probably most obvious uh, one, uh, which is reduction of CO2, mostly through renewables, PV and wind, but also batteries and um, also electrical vehicles. Uh, all of the numbers and statistics show the significant growth in all of these before mentioned value streams and we want to be the part of that. Um, next slide, please. So I'm relatively new to the organization, but I've had the great opportunity to um, talk to our management and it is my uh, understanding that within INC and also uh, SV, together with our internal partners, we not only want to be the part of this, we want to be the ones driving the market as well. Uh, and in order to do that, we provide our solutions uh, in this Internet of Energy. Uh, more concretely here, we have um, uh, control center solutions, which means practically SCADA, plant automation. Now we have solutions for microgrids and energy management system. And we are capable also of integrating third party applications such as different types of weather forecasts or analytics uh, together with these solutions to provide the, um, a rounded offering for an end customers. All of those solutions are intended for managing the decentralized generation assets, which we see here below. Um, next slide. So um, what is a microgrid? Well, microgrids are entities, uh, which for us means end customers who actively manage their own consumption and energy production. Per definition, microgrids have to be capable of running in islanded or off-grid mode, uh, independent of the grid. Uh, microgrids can integrate different types of uh, decentralized generation assets. For example, uh, on the generation side, we can find conventional diesel gas gensets uh, from renewables. We can find PV, wind, batteries. Now we also integrate hydrogen, so both production and storage and consumption. Uh, then there is a charging infrastructure and different types of floats. Um, microgrids can uh, not only integrate electrical, energy, but also thermal energy resources. Uh, many microgrids um, run almost always on grid and engage off grid or island in mode only when there is a certain event in the grid, in the blackout, and with that achieve the resilience, which is actually one of the main motivators for, uh, for a microgrid. Uh, microgrids come at uh, all different type voltage levels, so we can find them um, with high voltage, low voltage, medium voltage levels, or all three together. Um, they come in very different sizes. Uh, very small microgrids are called nanogrids, uh, which is which practically means um, a single kilowatt range as a, a house with PV and battery could be treated as a nanogrid. Uh, where our focus lies in is in um, medium and large microgrids, which means single to three digit megawatt range. Um, and the examples of such microgrids are real geographical islands or, or remote areas, which almost always run off grid. But there are there are these like industrial customers uh, which are mainly on grid, such as uh, 
in different industries, mines, uh, data centers, military bases, hospitals, uh, university campuses, and so on. Uh, all of which uh, would like to have the capability also running in off-grid mode. Um, so the key component which actually manages the microgrid in real time in coordinated and automated way is a microgrid controller. It is a brain of a microgrid which runs 24-7, uh, doesn't need the operator and provides the essential functions. Um, microgrid as a name suggests some kind of grid functionality, but in effect um, microgrids are very different than conventional transmission or distribution grids. Uh, they're ge geographically so small that standard grid functionalities like power flow, voltage drops, limit violations, fault location don't apply here. Uh, most of the functions are actually all around generation and consumption. Uh, these standard functions include um, autonomous generation control, which means practically starting and stopping uh, different types of generation, also limiting the power output of different generation assets. Uh, then we have um, the whole loop of islanding, so going off grid, uh, providing the black start when the grid is down, and then resynchronizing back to the grid once the power is restored. Reserve management means um, keeping enough reserve always to manage any type of uh, load changes. Uh, load shedding functionality uh, is the one which a microgrid controller implements when there is, a, for example, a, a certain event. Uh, in a microgrid, for example, when a generator falls out, then non-essential or non-critical load is shed in order to keep the stability. Um, data archiving, uh, event management, all of these functions then run in, in the connected small scale system with the microgrid controller. Uh, advanced functions, and this is where we have a certain level of customization, is where we integrate uh, thermal resources or hydrogen resources, and we additionally have a capability to integrate with a dispatch optimizer, which is then capable to uh, plan in the future, uh, integrate the load and generation forecast, and uh, provide the most optimal economic dispatch of the entire microgrid based on the cost. Um, next slide, please. Um, so, it is actually interesting to know that um, microgrids are very old. The first microgrid uh, was introduced by Thomas Edison himself in 1880s. Um, where he had um, different generation assets, he even had thermal resources and even a battery back then. Uh, but the, and they're very old, but the market itself um, uh, established itself some five years ago as a real energy market. And since then it has been growing at some average um, annual growth rate of 15%. Uh, most importantly, we see this already in our sales pipeline with some 70 projects or opportunities. Uh, and uh, when we look at the numbers, this practically means that uh, according to these forecasts, the market is about to triple uh, by 2029, which shows um, a great perspective uh, for our solution as well. Next slide. Uh, we come to our solution. Um, it is branded uh, Omnivice Hybrid Control. Um, it is modular, so we have three main components. One is microgrid controller with the functions that I've uh, just mentioned. Then we have a control center or SCADA system. This one uh, can work together as a small SCADA with microgrid controller, but it can also be independent and implemented without microgrid controller when uh, projects don't require such automated functionality, uh, maybe for uh, multi-site uh, constellations. And additionally to that, uh, we have um, a dispatch optimizer within Omnivice Fleet Management, a solution of our SVC and D colleagues, um, Maurice Fischer and, and Nicholas Dreuze, uh, which additionally to um, microgrid controller provide the, the 
the cost-based optimization. Next slide, please. So we see here how these components actually work together. Uh, microgrid uh, control works in, has a hierarchical architecture. So that practically means on the bottom level, we have generation assets uh, and loads, uh, which are managed by primary controllers. Primary controllers sit practically on those generation assets. And that means, for example, a PV plant would have own PV controller, which would manage um, a different number of inverters. Uh, it could be hundreds of, of string inverters below that, that level of control. Um, on top of that, on a secondary level comes a microgrid controller, which makes sure that all of different assets, all of the generation and, and load assets work in coordinated way. And this uh, level of operation is also provided automatically. It works on, on a sub-second level, practically 100 to 500 milliseconds and provides the secondary control of frequency, voltage, um, different uh, event management and so on. SCADA together with microgrid controller provides a full manual operation of all of the generation assets for the operator uh, when he wants to, to access these. Uh, and optionally, um, Tetriary control uh, integrates not only the measurements that come from the field, but also load forecast, weather forecast, uh, and then it calculates the um, economic dispatch. It also in integrates or uh, considers different prices of tariffs or costs of different generation assets like fuel costs and is able then based on that to decide what would be the cost optimal way to run the microgrid. Next slide please. Uh, here we see our solution uh, on a hardware and software level. Um, that means the microgrid functionalities are implemented on our T3000 system, uh, which connects via all different types of protocols with uh, the primary controllers of the generation assets on the bottom. Uh, we have a SCADA application server, which uh, serves for manual control and oversees the microgrid controller, and additionally dispatch optimizer, which is a software solution. Uh, and this one then communic communicates with, via OPC way with, with the SCADA application server. Um, and finally, next slide, please. I've also um, have here a couple of real use cases which we see uh, in the market and for which we have already done the offers. So a typical uh, microgrid use case would be an island or a remote area with a high renewable penetration. So we are now in a, a phase where uh, there is a lot of renewables and they are causing instability issues within microgrids especially. And the function, what some of the functions of microgrid controls are not just to uh, start and stop different generation assets, which we can see in a lower right corner, uh, at times when renewables are producing, but also uh, to manage this intermittency of the PV profile with a battery or, or other generation assets. So this would be a typical use case for, for an island or a remote area. Um, next slide. Uh, we have another use case here, which is a decarbonization of combined cycle plants, for example, more for industrial types of customers, which are mainly on grid, uh, but want to decarbonize, which means integrate renewables in some way uh, with different business cases, whether it, it is to offset the gas cost or uh, to um, play on the reserve market, offer ancillary services uh, onto the grid. Uh, by integrating the PV uh, battery and nowadays also hydrogen. So thank you very much. I hope you learned something about microgrids and you, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Uh, Dino, uh, thank you.